Hey guys, what's up? This is Bri. So much to talk about today. First and most importantly, I hope you're doing great. Excited for my Daimon to hang out with your Daimon, share some of the wisdom and lessons from uh, the last 24 hours. So, as you may recall, yesterday, eh, 77, time for more sleep is what Aura told me. Thank you very much for that feedback. I only got six hours of sleep yesterday. That doesn't work for me. So we talked about what wasn't working, right? And then we talked about what I was going to do differently. So I love having what I call rebound days where I make yesterday's thing was sleep, right? So I made that my number one thing yesterday. I wrote myself, as we playfully say, an optimize fundamental prescription, boom, focus. My number one thing was actually to reduce inputs. My problem was that I had become so active in the strategic thinking for the next phase of our business, very important stuff, but I allowed myself to just be too on. So my mind was just bubbling in ways and jumping around on different ideas in ways that it doesn't usually do. I wasn't properly oscillating, um, and it's fine because sometimes you need to do that, but I knew I needed to recover because I don't function the way I want on six hours of sleep. So my number one priority was that, reduce inputs, oscillate, really deeply recover, and um, get better. And so today I wanna talk about celebration and how important it is that we celebrate what's working and we celebrate the opportunity to get better by using data. So if you have a mistake, if you make a mistake in your life where you have a quote bad day, no room for shame. Don't waste that mistake. That data is pure gold, right? And we've talked about Ray Dalio, one of the most powerful and influential men in the world. He talks about the fact that his only goal in life is to evolve, right? He knows he's going to fail. Therefore, he has a mistake learner's high. But I want you to truly operationalize that and get it. Like you get high off of growth. So you don't have a fixed mindset. Even as I was preparing for this, my first version of my notes, which is over here, I spared you this. I know my writing's ridiculous, but this is what I was quickly journaling taking breaks through my meditation. Oh, this idea I got to share. This idea I got to share. I wrote down growth versus fixed mindset. I don't expect you to be able to write that. And I said, look, if I was trying to impress you, I wouldn't do these because I'd need to come across as perfect. I'm not trying to impress you. When I, if I'm trying to impress you in any way, it's that I want to show you how fiercely I am committed to growth. And ultimately, what I really want to do is impress you on yourself and your daimon and then hopefully give you an idea or two or 10 or whatever to incrementally grow together day in and day out. So anyway, if I have a bad day in quotes, and I should also mention that I actually don't have bad days these days. It's impossible to have a truly bad day. You can have some bad moments. And I had off little frustration moments on six hours of sleep, little stuff not going the way we wanted to in the business, just minor things that I responded to with more agitation than I normally would. And again, move through that, that's fine. But I didn't have a, quote, bad day. When you work your protocol, which is the series of habits that you know help you shine your best, and you have the algorithm written, and we talk about this a lot in the Optimized Coach program, we want to make you anti-fragile, such that you get stronger the more life pushes you around. Now, the thing you need to know is the worse you feel, the more committed you need to be to your protocol. Now, most people go like this. Most people, oh, I'm spiraling down into a vicious cycle because I don't feel good. Therefore, I'm going to stop doing all the things I know work for me. Eating, moving, sleeping, etc. Focusing my mind, managing my tech, etc. No, no, no. We teach our coaches. And again, why we get the results we get. We're 93% of our coaches at the end of our program feel connected to the best version of themselves versus 29% of the beginning is. I'm ruthless in hammering this particular um, and I'm fierce about it, this particular algorithm. The worse you feel, the more committed you are to your protocol. That's from my coach, my Yoda, Phil Stutz. He calls it emotional stamina. The only way you can have emotional stamina, anti-fragile confidence is what we call it, is if when you feel bad and when you make a mistake, you go beast mode on it, and you get even more focused to your protocol. Then you do this. You spiral up, and you literally you have a mistake when it's high. I get excited when I have an off day, because I make huge distinctions. Zeus, our dog, is going a little bit nuts there. Sorry about that. Um, you know, even just this morning, how am I going to reduce inputs? Well, I used to go into, I was going into messages. I don't use email. 
I don't use my smartphone other than for messages like or videos like this. And then when I'm with the kids, Alexander likes me to have the phone. Okay, fine, I'll take it. But I use messages to communicate with a few members on our team. But I was doing that too much. So what I did was, look, I got to share some strategic ideas, but I do not need to do that in a context in which I have inputs. So it's very simple, but I opened my computer and went to the paper document uh, and had a pre-input deep work download of a handful of ideas that are pretty good, if I may say so myself, that I want them to know about. Anyway, we want to get excited about mistakes, never waste it, that data is gold, no room for shame, etc. So with that, I will share with you kind of just the data real quick. After I take a nice, calm, relaxing, deep breath in through my nose, down into my belly, exhaling longer. Okay, cool. So then 85, I'm happy with that. That would be a 90 plus if I didn't have a sleep debt I'm paying off. I got eight hours of sleep last night. As you know now, if you're following along, that's my sweet spot. So these numbers, I want to celebrate. A resting heart rate of 40 consistently locked in is just legit. I know what's working and I'm going to keep on doing it. It's my eating sunset is the number one thing, so you know. I'm actually not training that hard right now. I'm in very good shape, and I move throughout the day, but I'm not training particularly hard, which is also helping my recovery. But this number, but it's the eating that really drives up for me. If you haven't experienced with, experimented with an eating sunset yet, get on that. At least two hours before you go to bed, stop eating. If you're feeling like a pro, four hours. Now, this heart rate variability number, um, for me even, is astonishing. So uh, you can see that like the trends here, it went from you know, a pretty good 65, 57, 81. These are good numbers, right? But then all of a sudden, I just went up to a whole new level. 58, 110, 148. Now, my number one thought on it right now is it's this guy. It's that nano V I've talked about. So guess what? I'm hammering that like a pro. I'm having fun with it. We'll see if I can make that my new baseline, which another way we can look at this is the monthly trend. You can see it's kind of dipped and up and down 50, 70. Um, 70 again is really good. But now this month I'm averaging 81 um, and I'm excited to see, can I make this new best, my new baseline? which is a Josh Waitzkin idea in his book called The Art of Learning, which should be called The Art of Mastery. If you achieve a high level of performance, you want to unpack that and understand exactly what you did and do it again and again and again and not give up those gains. So I don't know if this is going to stay where it is. I'm agnostic to whether or not it, it does, but I'm fiercely committed to figuring out the variables that are making it work because that's a not an incremental gain. That's a big lever that's pretty exciting. Now, again, the readiness would be higher if I didn't have this sleep debt that I'm repaying, starting with Eleanor, waking up in the morning, etc. And then again, sleep, nine hours in bed. There's my magic number. Eight hours of sleep, 88% efficiency. I'll take it. Boom. Um, restfulness, really funny. The stoic gods had fun with me yesterday. At midnight or 1 a.m. or something like that, our robot vacuum decided to go off. I laughed because I had just created a PNTV on the Stoic Challenge. Um, here's the note by William B. Irvine, professor and practitioner of philosophy. And he, the whole book is about when you have a challenge in your life, see it as a the Stoic gods are challenging you to see if you're actually practicing your philosophy. If you get your plane delayed, don't complain about it. Say, ah, Stoic gods. You know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the robot vacuum went off and I laughed to myself and I said, very, very clever, stoic gods. That was a good one. So I got up, turned it off, went back to bed, worked the protocol to get back to sleep. Which, by the way, to remind you again, if I go, when I fall asleep, I do the exact same thing every single night. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I do the exact same thing every night. Which is, I breathe into a count of six, I hold it for a count of one, and I exhale for a count of eight. And I do that five times. I count it on my fingers. I go like this, boom, one. And then, okay, that's the second breath, third breath, fourth breath, fifth breath. It's what I do every single night. We hang out as a family uh, in bed. We're all sleeping in the same bed now. Emerson's new thing is uh, he puts this on his finger and he tries to see how low he can get his heart rate every single night now. He has so much fun with it. And it's hilarious because the other night I'm like, dude, you need to stop. Like, we got to go to bed now. He wanted to see if he can get it lower. And I laughed because... 
I know a lot of parents struggle with screen time, phones and stuff. He doesn't use that for anything other than an iPod for audiobooks. So this is his screen, seeing if he can get his heart rate <laughs> optimized. Anyway, after we do that, we put the tape on our mouths and then I do my breathing exercise. Now, when I got up in the middle of the night to turn off the robot vacuum, I went back to bed and I did exactly that. It's no time to think. I'm not interested in solving my life's problems when I'm up in the middle of the night. I'll, I'll do a quick needs work analysis on it. Um, but then I'm back to bed. And we actually talk about this in the coaching program as well. So let's see if we got the sleep data. Oh, there we go. So our coaches feel energized when they start the day. Then they feel energized in the afternoon. Now, the number one way to do that is sleep, period. So we teach them, there's some data in here, but we teach them to turn off their electronics, of course. And we also teach them um, what to do if they do wake up in the middle of the night in our sleep session, etc. Oh, wait, where were we? Yeah. All right, cool. There we go. It's more than enough. So fired up. I'm on a roll. I've got eight um, PNTVs done. These are my notes on the philosopher's notes. I've already done the PNTV on the Stoic Challenge, how to think like a Roman emperor, digital minimalism. Um, it takes what it takes. Great book. Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg. Uh, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. And the very first one I did a note on, a TV on was Future Visions by Maslow. So I've got eight done. We're actually probably going to push the start of PNTV back a week um, because we got a lot going on with our coach launch. And then today I'm going to do PNTVs on The Joy of Movement by Kelly McGonigal. Amazing book. Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday. Another amazing book. Gratitude Works, The Science of Gratitude. Crazy stats there. Fired up about it. Um, and I'm also creatively figuring out my flow. There's always a process for me as I figure out, well, how do I do this most efficiently? That's how I'm able to produce at a high level. I have systems that are dialed in. And so I'm getting a new rhythm here, fired up to hammer out the first hundred philosopher's notes. Oh, I forgot to mention one more thing. Knowing we're going long here. This is our optimize coach. You can call it a diploma or a certificate. We actually call it a declaration. This is what our coaches get, um, you know, when they graduate our program, All right? So I wrote declaration there. And the idea is that we handed this to them at our graduation 300 days into the program, right? But we basically said, look, congratulations, you graduated the program. It's day one. Start again. This is a declaration, not a... Um, a diploma where you're done. You're never exonerated. And that's the essence of our philosophy. So I used to sign this every single morning as a recommitment. And then it kind of wound up finding a place on my um, windowsill where I can see it every single day. So this morning I did what I used to do and what I encourage our coaches to do and what I will start doing again. Maybe I'll do that with you. Um, I recommit. So let's just look at the diploma briefly because it captures the essence of every single thing that I aspire to help you, whether or not you ever join our optimized community officially, um, you know, as a member of our core wisdom or as a coach, whatever, who, who cares ultimately, whatever channel is best for you is awesome. But this is what I'm trying to help us achieve. So optimize enterprises. We're a public benefit corporation. I'm very proud of that. I'm fiercely committed to using business as a force for good. Longer chat at optimize.me slash business. We have a 101 on that. But Here's our diploma. Oops. Having demonstrated a commitment to arete through the mastery of ancient wisdom, modern science, and the fundamentals of optimal living, both in their own life and in service to others, let it be known that I am proud to be here. Brian Johnson is hereby recognized as a certified optimized coach. How awesome is that? And granted all privileges thereunto appertaining for as long as they continue to demonstrate their commitment through practice. So obviously we're having fun playing with the typical, you know, diploma, but then making it real and alive today. It witness whereof we hereby commit to do our best to operationalize virtue and live with arte, honoring the fundamentals and striving to be our optimized equals optimist equals best equals eudaimon equals hero selves and energy, work and love. When are we going to do that? You got my signature here, and you got Michael Balshan, our, our head coach there. I'm going to do that today. I hereby commit to being the best version of myself in service to you today. How about you? Let's go. All right. As always, optimize.me for the uh, whatever course stuff, and then optimize.me slash coach 
We push day one back to September 1st. We're fired up. If you want to join us, optimize.me slash coach. Um, yeah, we're 2,000 people now from over 70 countries. So fired up. Um, we'd love to have you join us. Now that timer just went off. I'm doing something fun. I'm creating these things I call hero makers, right? So I do my normal burpees 100 a day. But these days I'm doing a burpee. So I jump back, right, on these little weights. And then I'll do two push-ups to have strength for two is what I'm thinking about, right? So boom, two push-ups. And then I jump back up as a burpee. Then I do that three times. And every third one, I do a lat pull, right? Like a row, boom, boom. And then I do three more. And then I do another lat pull, boom, boom. And then I do three more, boom, boom. And then I get to 11. I always do 11 reps. If I'm ever going to do 10, I do 11. Champions do more. Playfully reminding myself, plus one. Do a little bit more. Give your best. And then in the end, I just do a few curls, um, different style, etc. We got, we got the big guy out here. What's up, buddy? Hey. Want to say hi to everybody? I'm just wrapping up a hi. video. Just tell them, have an awesome day. Have an awesome day. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Love you, buddy. All right. Let's go.